There's been a song on every album that really carried forth the attitude of the band and the audience that we have. I mean, it's a singular thing. It's like, it's almost like at a, at a Man of War show, I'm playing for my own family. I mean, it's that type of a feeling. And that's the attitude that we share. You know, we're there for a good time. We're there for heavy metal. And wimps and posers should leave the hall. I mean, if they happen to wander in there, which I don't imagine what they'd be doing at a Man of War concert. But uh, it doesn't usually take a long time once the band fires up for all the squares to leave the place anyway. But yeah, it's, it's always quite a laugh when the band strikes up to see the audience that we have so happy and see a few of the jerks that manage to wander in and they're like very much outraged. It's, it's a good feeling and we want these people out of the place as soon as possible. Well, we took the time to build a recording studio. We wanted to make sure that we had the proper environment to record a record. I mean, we've recorded all over the world and we found that some places didn't want to really crank up the gear. They were afraid when we'd blow up speakers, you know, rightfully so. So we decided to put together a studio that we'd be able to do what we want, whenever we want, as late as we want, come back the next day with the same settings that we left off, and just let it rip. So that took a bit of time. Also, writing the material took quite a lot of time to be sure that we could come up with something that'd be worthy of the fans that we have, which, as you know, are the greatest fans in the world. In truth, Scott and Rhino have been close friends for many, many years. And when he recommended the fact that his good friend should be the drummer for the band. We were a bit skeptical because after being used to Scott's playing, I mean, one of the most fantastic drummers ever, we uh, had a bit of skepticism, but uh, it was removed immediately when he started playing. It was just unquestioned. And the guy's talent really speaks for itself. And of course, uh, Scott rewarded him with his own personal drum kit made out of stainless steel. And uh, he burned his own drum kit that night in the parking lot. So it was uh, quite an interesting way of doing things, but we're a band of brothers. We've always been that way and will continue to be so. The story of Achilles is basically the story of the Trojan War, as told by Homer. It's considered one of the greatest books ever written, and the story deals with the Trojan War in essence. Achilles, the hero of the Greeks, uh, went with his army and the rest of the Greek army to Troy to battle Hector, who was the hero of the Trojans. And Hector killed the best friend of Achilles, Patroclus, and in doing that, enraged Achilles thereby angering him to then join the battle, which he had not taken part in at that time. And not only does he kill Hector, but he desecrates his body at the end of it, and it's a huge ritual the way he kills Hector and desecrates his body and makes a big to-do of it. So we made a big to-do of the song and made sure that we told each part specifically so that you could get the real feeling, the desecration of this guy's body. The drum solo tells the story of the armor being prepared. So each solo has a certain segment. The funeral march is told on guitar so that we're really able to illustrate the story musically and get it across right to the heart. Conscious are just basically full of shit and they're trying to cop out and find a way around the fact that they have no talent, they can't play their instruments, they're taking money from people for tickets and records when they really are not delivering music. I mean, a musician should be able to control, command, and play his instrument, not just simply wear it. And lyrics should be something that are thought up, developed, and invented from a sense of inspiration or something that really has some type of uh, inner feeling and to just take a newspaper pick it up and translate that or watch the evening news and just translate things that are tragic and ridiculous and turn around and say you're being quote unquote socially conscious it's what we call a two-fisted wank really so for us the relevance to what's going on in today's society is when you're dealing with heavy metal and you want to go to a heavy metal concert you should be able to take your mind off of the fact that you broke your ass all day at work or you might have had a bad day at home or your parents may have given you a hard time. You should be able to go, get the sweat out, get entertained, get the frustration out, sort of recharge your batteries to go back to life. Well, I think there's a connection, obviously, here in Europe with the band and the fact that all the great composers came from Europe and we're fortunate to have the understanding that we do and the direct connection. I think there's a real appreciation about musicianship and heavy metal in general here. 
whereas in America it sort of is pumped down your throat in a commercial way that one band comes, one band goes, and if you stick with a band, great. If not, don't worry about it. Another one will come down the tube at you in about five minutes. So there's a real deep appreciation here in the fact that if someone does something from the heart, you really derive a connection from that. And I think we're fortunate to have that and to have the audience that we have, and we certainly respect it and don't take it for granted. Yeah.